I'm Stephen Hicks, uh, Executive Director at the Center for Ethics and Entrepreneurship, and my guest today is Professor David Mayer. Dr. Mayer is a Professor of History and Law at Capital University in Ohio. He's a PhD from the uh, University of Virginia, has his law degree from the University of Michigan. And his uh, work in progress is a book called Freedom's Constitution. Uh, what's the full title? Dr. Freedom's Constitution, a Libertarian Interpretation of the Constitution of the United States. All right, sounds good. Now, one of your uh, core theses is uh, to do with interpreting the Constitution, and any constitutional uh, manuscript has to take up this set of issues. And uh, on your reading, jurisprudence and constitutional interpretation now divides into a broadly conservative approach versus a broadly left liberal approach. Mm -hmm one side uh, uh, arguing for uh, in, in, original interpretation, the other side being more constructivist. What is the distinction between those two mm -hmm. broad approaches? Well, uh, there are actually several different distinctions sure. there, but roughly speaking, the uh, conservative approach, uh, approach that political conservatives have followed in recent years, basically since the Reagan administration, okay. uh, has been uh, an interpretivist approach, focusing on the text of the Constitution, uh, coupled with uh, a theory of originalism, uh, original intent, as it's often called, although original meaning is what most of the proponents of originalism now refer to it, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, uh, probably the, be the most famous uh, exposition of that interpretivist slash originalist interpretation came from uh, Reagan's uh, Attorney General Edwin Meese in a speech he gave in the mid-1980s to the Federalist Society. Uh, then on the other side, the left liberals uh, have a non-textualist or non-interpretivist approach that emphasizes values found outside the text okay. of the Constitution and also generally reject originalism, original meaning as a as a guide to interpreting the Constitution. Uh, one uh, popularized sort of theory of the left liberal approach to the Constitution is, is the so-called living Constitution model, the idea that the Constitution should be interpreted uh, in a way that gives meaning uh, to it in, in the conditions of modern society rather than uh, even uh, seriously uh, being concerned about the original meaning of the okay. text. All right. And one of your theses is that that uh, set of readings is a false alternative, mm -hmm. and you would like to replace that with what you call a contextualist yes. uh, approach. All right, so what are the, the main uh, theses involved in a contextualist reading? Okay. Well, I think uh, the, the, the problem with the modern debate over constitutional interpretation is uh, both sides really don't take into account uh, the overall purpose uh, of uh, the Constitution uh, or the importance of context generally. Uh, so uh, both sides in the modern debate present uh, what uh, might be considered a sort of one-size-fits-all theory of constitutional interpretation where uh, whatever theory one ascribes to, uh, textualism, originalism, interpretivism or non-interpretivism, non-originalism, living constitution model, uh, the same theory uh, applies to every single provision of the Constitution, mm -hmm. uh, not taking into account uh, its context in relation to other provisions within the document as a whole, or the purpose of the Constitution as a whole. Um, what, what's different about my approach is to emphasize context uh, as uh, really the most important uh, element in constitutional interpretation, uh, understanding each provision in light of its relationship to other provisions, okay. uh, following one of the sort of basic rules of uh, interpreting not just constitutions, but other kinds of legal documents, uh, contracts or other legal documents, wills, uh, uh, a, a basic rule or canon of interpretation uh, for, for many years, for many centuries literally, has been to interpret each provision in a way so that it gives meaning to the other provisions. Okay. Uh, and so that kind of text, contextual approach uh, I maintain is, is uh, particularly suited uh, to a constitution, and yet ironically it's something that both sides in the modern debate tend to ignore. All right, so against a one-size-fits-all interpretation, one of the big distinctions you think uh, a contextualist approach would take is the distinction between rights protecting mm -hmm. clauses and powers granting clauses. Right. All right. right. Uh, how does that work out? 
Well, it's uh, yeah, power granting clauses on one hand and either rights guaranteeing or power limiting clauses okay. on the other hand. Um, but uh, that recognizes uh, first and maybe foremost that, that the essential function of a constitution is to limit the power of government. And when we're talking about the U.S. Constitution, it's particularly to limit the power of the national government, although with the addition of the 14th Amendment to the Constitution, there are some very important limits on state government powers, too. Okay. But if its purpose is to limit governmental powers, then uh, I would argue that the power-granting clauses of the Constitution really ought to be interpreted differently than the power limiting or restraining or the rights guaranteeing uh, clauses. Um, and uh, what makes my theory uh, a peculiarly or particularly libertarian theory is that it emphasizes individual liberty. It takes a kind of liberty maximizing approach or power minimizing approach, which I see as basically two sides of the same coin. Mm -hmm. So uh, generally speaking, takes a narrower, stricter view uh, of uh, power granting clauses and a broader, more liberal view, if I can use that word, uh, for uh, rights guaranteeing or power limiting clauses. Okay. What if we tried an example? Suppose we took the First Amendment as its mm -hmm. three uh, main clauses. We take the uh, freedom of the press clause mm -hmm. in there. Mm -hmm. uh, how would uh, your interpretation contextually differ then from, say, an interpretivist slash originalist right. or non-interpretivist approach to that particular clause. Right. Well, it would it would it would first understand it to be a, a rights guaranteeing clause, okay. one that is worded actually quite broadly, uh, in, in nearly absolute terms. Uh, Congress shall pass no law abridging freedom of the press. Okay. Um, a an originalist approach. Uh, one difficulty with an originalist approach to that clause is that the original meaning of the First Amendment free press, free speech clause underwent a tremendous change uh, within the first decade or so mm -hmm. uh, after the uh, Bill of Rights were ratified. That was okay. because of the debate over the Sedition Act of 1798 and the Jeffersonian Republican uh, criticism of the Sedition Act uh, created uh, the beginnings of a modern uh, libertarian, much more libertarian theory of, of interpretation. Uh, so how should we interpret the uh, First Amendment uh, free speech, free press clause today? In a very liberal way. Mm -hmm. uh, we, should, we should understand freedom of speech and freedom of the press very broadly to include not only criticism of government, mm -hmm. which was a particular issue uh, in 1798, but to include all kinds of uh, uh, speech. Uh, and uh, not to carve out exceptions the way both liberals and conservatives have done. Uh, liberals would like to create exceptions for free speech and freedom of the press when it comes to things like campaign finance mm -hmm. uh, laws. Conservatives would want to create exceptions for so-called obscenity or indecent uh, speech. Uh, so my approach would interpret it very broadly, in, in, you know, taking into account not only the absolute terms of the clause itself, but the fact that it is a fundamental right protecting clause and therefore should be interpreted in a liberty maximizing way.